family, thank you for coming back at the table with Chef Jay. We have an amazing guest this evening, uh, Miss Yolanda yes. and Lydia Grace. Yeah. Right? Okay, yes. good. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, her mother's peach. Yes, yes. I am so amazed at this guest. And the reason why is because she bought her mother's recipe. Yes. In her own handwriting. Mm -hmm. I would cherish that. All I need with mom, my mom's, I mean, I got ready to prepare her dish. I had to figure that dish. I had to right. research. Right. And only she did that for you. Right. Isn't that right. amazing? Right. We're our greatest cookie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, Mr. Von, we want you yes. to tell us uh, a little bit about your day. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, first of all, thank you for this opportunity. We appreciate this. And it is another opportunity for me to share about myself and my platform. I am Yolanda James. I am a veteran educator, um, primarily in early childhood and elementary ed. Um, currently, I am a certified life coach, and I have started a business um, brand and platform entitled Soulfully Mommy. And Soulfully Mommy is something that was birthed when I gave birth to my first child at 43. And when I gave birth to Lydia Grace, God showed me that there were a lot of there was a lot of healing that I still needed to do as a woman because my desire was to be the best mother that I could be. And so I always tell people that Lydia Grace is my catalyst for change. Hmm. And you know, not like I do I was, you know, terrible or whatever, but just the fact that I was on a trajectory and there was a lot of um, unhealed places that needed to be dealt with and they were causing me to make some life choices, some decisions and and really blocking my potential. So Lydia Grace was that callous for change that God gave me to make me stop and reflect <laughs> because I have this little person um, who everybody calls her my twin, but she truly looks like her father. <laughs> she is her father's twin. Um, but I had this little person looking at me and I wanted to be sure that what she saw was good and anything that I had that was unhealed that I made sure I healed it so I did not transfer that trauma for myself. Perfect. What an amazing story. I just think that's amazing. And one thing that resonated with what she said is that she wanted to be a good We need more of you. We need those women that want to be good mothers and those fathers that want to be good mothers. You have just not only been an awesome um, guest, but she has just shared an amazing story that I have chills with. But that's one of the things we try. We try to be good mothers, good mothers to our children. And I'm going to fix it. Thank just you. take it on that platform and being that person that can help others. And you know, my, my struggle with that platform is that I know I'm flawed. I know I'm still healing. And so sometimes, I guess that kind of imposter syndrome kind of wants to um to uh, sneak in and that like, I'm not a perfect parent and nor is there a perfect parent, you know? So then how can I still yet share with others and not be in a way that I'm looking down on them? Or, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of struggle with that balance, but I'm just doing what I feel so led to do to parent her. And one of the most recent things that was a major life change was I chose to step away from teaching full time so that I could be home with her. Even though she is school age, it's still so much that she needs. And I was giving so much to other people's children, which was always my passion before I became a mother. But then in the afternoon, I felt as if I was depleted and I didn't have anything to give to her. And I needed to stop and reset. And I think COVID did that for a lot of people. And a lot of people chose to reset during that period. But there are a lot of people who I think even after COVID are continuing to reevaluate, reflect, and reset in their lives. And so I feel like my life change is a result of that. I love that story because and I kind of just when my daughter, I didn't really, I was working so much that by the time I went in her event, she was like 13 or 14. My husband was going to take my all these different events and stuff like that. So let's take time out for my children. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. That's just amazing. Um, and so we want to talk about the dish. That yes. It's so amazing, beautiful, smells <laughs> good, guys. I'm going to tell you that. Thank so she, you. I want her to tell me the story about why this is your favorite dish. Okay. Now, this dish right here is low. Okay, right? So this is an illustration of love in our family. So this is my mom's famous peach cobbler. She has won, you know, cooking, baking contests, you know, locally, local church, things like that. She's won that, but everybody will always request for her to make it. All right, so I didn't bring the ingredients today to make it because as I was making it today, and I have not made it in years. So I, had, so I had to ask mama, like, please come help me. Thank you, thank you, um, thank you for that. Yes. You made it for us, guys. Yes, so... The thing about it always was, and we, and we attempted to make it this summer. Lydia Grace and I, you know, we teaching her how to cook. And you know, I spent a lot of time in the kitchen alone. 
So I want to, you know, continue that tradition. <laughs> so I made it this summer for my family, who is my brother and my nephew. Nephew, and my oldest one was home because he plays uh, basketball overseas. And so I made it, but I used a TikTok variation, <laughs> okay? Okay. For the dough. Right. And when I when they chased it, we didn't miss out pride by ourselves, not one, okay? We were proud of ourselves. And so they said, this does not taste like rum. <laughs> and I said, well, I mean, I know it tastes the same. So when I'm saying that, like when you're cooking this peach cobbler, my mom preferred canned peaches. Yeah, she really did. I was thinking about that today. That came to me. She really preferred canned peaches over fresh. She had tried it, but she said it was just so hard to sweeten to the way she liked it, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so you do uh, canned peaches, and then you put two sticks of butter, and then you all these things are to taste. Okay. The amount of cinnamon you choose to use, the amount of nutmeg mm -hmm. you choose to um, use, uh, a splash of vanilla, and a splash of lemon flavor. Mm -hmm. So that's it. But it's all to taste. Right. And so today I knew it was right when I tasted it. You see what I'm saying? So right. it's hard right. to get a pinch, right. you know, but, but it's all to taste. So anyway, that's how you make the peach cob. But that's not the heart of the dish. Okay. The heart of the dish is the dough. Because my mama could stand there and make biscuits <laughs> in her hand. We ate biscuits every oh my day. God. We had homemade biscuits awesome. every day for breakfast, right? So her peach cobbler crust is the same biscuit dough. So then she always knew we loved her biscuits, so she made sure it had plenty of dough. So my my TikTok variation was about pouring something in and all that kind of stuff. And my brother and I said, well, what's what, what's the difference about this? Not my ego, my ego was crushed. And I said, so y'all can't make a peach cobbler. At least I'm a tip. And you know what I said? I said the only difference is between the TikTok variation and how Mama did it was the dough. And my brother said, right. Mm. And it's the process That's because right. the love was the dough. The fact that mama needed the dough. And then I have a video today. Lily Beth got to make her own peach cobbler. We, we made it too. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So it's about kneading that dough and rolling it out just right and getting it to the right, um, you know, level of thinness or whatever. And then she, and I was telling Lily how she would slice the dough and lay it down carefully. And so this little <laughs> tiny dish today has three layers of dough. Because we wanted more than just your bottom layer, your top layer. We wanted plenty of dough, but it had to be, it had to be just a right balance of dough and not dry, That's right? True. So then Mama would pull it out the oven and then drizzle the leftover like pie filling, the juice or whatever. She would drizzle that over the dough. So like it had to be kind of crunchy around the edges, but definitely not dry. Moist to the almost like it kind of glistens, whatever kind of sugar does when it right. crystallizes. That's right. That's right. But I that see that crystallization all around the pan. <laughs> I recognize There you go. There you go. Recognize so, the food. So, yeah, so it's really to the, you know, the peach cobbler filling, pie filling. Anybody could season that to however they, that taste that they desire, right? Because I was always just really sweet and rich. But that's it. But the thing about this, the heart of the dish is the dough. That's and, the, and the thing about the dough is this hand roll and, you know, with a rolling pin and all that kind of stuff. And, and I got that experience today and it was like, mom. So thank you. Yes, that's what it's all about. Is bringing their memories back about their sisters yeah. and the way they showed us love. That's what at the table, um, I'm sorry, at the table chef is sharing love from my mother. What an amazing say? thing. You I want to share dead. something? Oh, okay. Handwritten recipe. Yes. I just, oh yeah. my God. I was thinking this is amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming and we're going to be sitting thank at the you. table. Okay. And we're going to have a cut of this dessert. And, and we are waiting it. for that. Okay. We are ready for the table. <laughs> So we'll see you at the table. All right. Thank you. So for my grandfather to have us on uh, at his house, me and my grandmother's house on Sunday afternoon after church, that was a, uh, a big thing for him. And so he would just sit there and watch us eat. And we were like, why are you just watching us eat? You know, then go get some more. Go get another. How would how that taste? And he said, because, you know, growing up impoverished himself, one of eight, and for the fact that he had eight children, that him to be able to have that ability to be able to feed all of us to our food you know, until I feel that filled him. So, you know, people have different love languages. I felt like in my family, that was what's passed down. Preparing delicious food and feeding people is a part of the love language of our family. And so I think that's important too. A lot of times I think we have lost the whole art of fellowship, mm -hmm. family, food, and fellowship. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then just to, to be able to sit around the table and just, you know, how was your day or, you know, how was your week and be able to just have that food and whatever it is. And I think, you know, we have seen with social media, everything has to look a certain way, you know, but really and truly when you have true fellowship, it's about people coming together who are 
like-minded, like-spirited, you know, and then eating good food and enjoying the time together so that you have your natural food and your spiritual food. Right. Mm. Yeah. So she has touched on something because my love language is seeing people come to my home, what's left studio space, and enjoy a delicious and beautiful dish, meal, laugh, enjoy music. That's what we do at Entertainment Chef Jack. So I'm going to try to peach cotton. Okay. And let you know, guys know how it works. Okay. In honor of Miss Betty. Miss Betty. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And look delicious, darling. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> and so you can share with some of our taste buds. We'll be chewing it out. Okay. Anything else you want to share? Well, I just want to say, remember now, the heart of the dish is a dope. So I'm, I'm curious to see how does the dope taste. Mm -hmm. This probably... And this is true, I've tried a lot of different desserts. I think this is the best peach cobbler I've ever had. Are you serious? I'm serious. This is delicious. The butter. That's the it. The dough. Yeah. The cinnamon. Um, just the way the peaches are just melt in your mouth. The dough melts. I didn't have to almost chew it. It's just so tender and so delicious. And I'm going to thank you. Ooh, she came over an hour. She came from Lancaster, South. So yeah. now I'm going to just to share her love peach cobbler dish with us. Thank you for the opportunity. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Yeah. At the table, Chef.